and he rose again and we celebrate that God we worship you Jesus you're worthy Jesus thank you for cross thank you for the prize you
somebody in this moment. He's worthy. He's holy. He's mighty. God, we worship you, Jesus. Come on, somebody, every believer, open your mouth. Every tongue shall confess. Every believer, if you're worthy. Come on, somebody, lift up your hands in the room, Jesus.
time, I'm going to ask them to lift up the sound. And when the band lifts up the sound, you're going to make the biggest sound in this building that it's going to shake the walls. Today is the day that our Lord Jesus, he died and he rose again. There's only one name that has ever died and rose again for your sins. You can do a little better than you've done. So when I count to three, we're going to shout, we're going to scream, and we're going to sing, holy is the name. One, two, three, shout. church. What a blessing to be in the house of the Lord on this Easter Sunday morning, Resurrection Day. Amen. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. I mean, everyone looks so wonderful today. I don't think I've ever wore white before, but, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I think I look good today. I like, I like my I white. I think you look great. I, I think like you it. look great. You always look good. Yes. We, just so, we want to welcome everybody here to the house of the Lord on this Easter Sunday, Resurrection Day. If you're not happy on Easter, when are we going to get excited? That's right. That's right. Our Savior is not dead. He's alive. Yes. And we welcome everybody who's watching us online. You can uh, follow us, subscribe. We want you to enjoy today. We've got a great word. I'm going to be speaking about the resurrection power. It's not like you think. Resurrection is not like you think. It's not just an event. I'm going to give you a little bit. It's a person. Resurrection is a person today. His name is Jesus. So you want to stay tuned. Yes. Let somebody know. Send it to someone. Let, let's just enjoy the goodness of the Lord. And we're going to do something awesome. You got some things you want to share? Well, share? I do want to know if you're here for your first time, we would love to officially give you a warm welcome. Would you just raise your hand real big if this is your first time yeah, let's see at it. City Church? Is this Look your at first all time? the hands. We welcome you, you with the love of the Lord. Welcome, welcome to City Church. Welcome, sir. Welcome. God bless you. We welcome you today. And this is what we're going to do. Listen, don't get started yet. Don't get started, Pastor Wendy. I see you running. We're going to take two minutes. Now, we've got to limit you guys to two minutes. You know why? Because two things Christians like to do. You like to talk and, and you like to eat. Yes. So we've got to limit it, all right? So we're going we're gonna to take two minutes, and I want you to go visit and, and greet as many people as possible in two minutes. So that means you've got to... You got to put your hug on real quick. Go hug an Move Easter real egg. Fast. Go but hug, hug an somebody Easter here today. egg this morning. Greet somebody. Two minutes starting now. Let's go. Praise the Lord. Well, good morning and happy Easter online family. We're here today and we want to just extend a good welcome. You know, today is the day that Jesus rose from the dead. You heard from the bishop. And we want to, we just, we're so excited about what God's going to do uh, today. It's such an amazing day. We have so much victory in our Lord Jesus. We are so excited for all of you watching. If it is your first time, we want you to scan that QR code that you see on the screen. It's going to guide you to some really important information so you can find out more about the church. We're so glad you're watching us today. What else do we want to know from you know, our viewers? While we're doing this two-minute greet, we want to greet you that are watching us online. Tell us where you're watching from. So if you'll say hello in the chat 
and say where you're watching from. We want to just take a moment and greet some of you. We're on Facebook. We're on uh, YouTube. I'm on YouTube. Yeah, so we're just waiting for you that when you say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm watching from the Channel Islands. I'm watching from North Dakota or New York City. Yes. Uh, we want to just greet you with the love of the Lord this morning. We have viewers from all over yeah. the world. Our church is so diverse. Yeah. When we come together, it truly is what I believe heaven's going to look like. But we also know that people who can't physically be here are joining all over the world. That's it's right. really a privilege to have That's you right. join us today. Good morning, uh, Marlene. Happy Easter to you from New York. That's wonderful. Thank you for joining us. Listen, so many of y'all are here. Yeah. Another thing I want to just bring your attention to, you know, the, we, we always talk about how the Holy Spirit is present everywhere. Yeah. But if you sense the need that you have a prayer request, you, you desire yeah. prayer, you want our team to pray for you, you can put it in the chat yeah. or you can scan that QR code again. Go to our website, yeah. citychurchnola.life, and put in your prayer request. We love you. Have a great day. God bless you. Grow workshops are moving completely online starting April 2nd. For more information, register now at citychurchnola.life or text GROW to 504-500-0809. Sharing God's love with the world. City Church wants to welcome you to our YouTube page between healing and a miracle. Now look, now healing refers to... You can listen to teachings that will help you grow spiritually and personally. You'll also see a variety of unique videos, including podcasts, the full Sunday experience, short films, and personal testimonies. Subscribe today by searching City Church NOLA. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. City Church will be hosting a baby dedication Saturday, April 13th at 2 p.m. To register your baby, text the word DEDICATE to 504-500-0809. Hello, people of God. What a joy it is to come to you with some exciting news that I believe the Holy Spirit has dropped into my spirit. And I don't just say that lightly. I mean it with all of my heart. I am persuaded that God is raising up a prophetic army for a last day anointing. So what does that mean? The Lord has instructed me to create a prophetic community where we can collaborate and orderly understand God's moving of the prophetic in this day. So we're going to begin a class on April the 16th on how to hear God's voice. If you feel you're prophetic and you want to know more about how to do things in decency and in order, and you want to be a part of a prophetic community, I'm talking to you. So look out. There's some news coming down the line. We're going to begin on April 16th. You can join us. The prophetic community is on the way, and God has something special for you. Good morning and happy Easter. Happy Easter. Welcome to City Church. 
If this is your first time joining us and you're wondering what are your next steps, our GROW classes are your next step. That's right, because these four classes are for those that have recently given their hearts to Christ and who just want to get more involved here at the church. Okay. Also, don't forget to mark your calendars for this Tuesday because all GROW classes will be officially online. Okay. To learn more information about GROW or all things happening right here at City Church, just simply check out our website at <laughs> citychurchnola.life. Again, we thank you for joining us and we hope you enjoy service. Don't forget to grab your free snowball outside the foyer right after service. Happy Easter! Church, praise the Lord, City Church. It's Easter Sunday. Yeah, man. Jesus said that if to be destroyed in three days, I would rebuild it. Just to understand in this past week of signs, wonders, and miracles, the greatest miracle of all time occasioned on this morning in history. For you and I to have the privilege to support the kingdom, to finance the kingdom, to bring God's tithes and our offerings into the storehouse, to me will forever be one of the most incredible privileges and one of the most greatest joys and one of the most beautiful expressions of our worship that God the Father ever gave us. To think that once you and I were lost, but now we are found. Somebody must have prayed. Somebody must have sown a seed that you and I came to know Him. And today, as we continue week by week, sowing into the kingdom, there are people on the outside of those doors, people in your family and my family, that will come to know Him because we sowed a seed. The greatest seed of all was sown into the ground for three days and three nights, yet to rise again. Stand with me if you would. Those of you online, follow the prompts. Those of us in this beautiful sanctuary, let's honor God today with His tithes and our offerings. In Jesus' name. today for this privilege and joy that we have in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
sing a song together how we know Jesus is alive today he's risen worthy is the lamb we'll sing that again the guys can come out and help me you know more than 2,000 years ago there was a man born to contrary of nature he laid aside his purple robe for a peasant's tunic he was rich yet for our sake he became poor he was raised in poverty and obscurity he received no formal education, and he never possessed wealth or widespread influence. He never traveled extensively across the boundaries of his own country. But this man's life has changed the course of history. In infancy, he startled a king. In childhood, he amazed the religious scholars. In manhood, he ruled the course of nature. He walked on stormy waves, calmed the raging sea, he healed the multitudes without medicine and made no charge for his services. He never practiced psychiatry, yet he healed more broken hearts than all the doctors far and near. He never wrote a book, yet his life inspired more books than any other man. Hallelujah. He never wrote a song, yet he has furnished the theme for more songs than all the songwriters combined. He never founded a school, or a college, yet the schools together combined do not have as many students as he has. He never marshaled an army. He never drafted a soldier or fired a gun. Yet no leader has had as many rebels surrender to him without a shot. Herod was not killed. Herod could not kill him. Satan could not seduce him. His enemies could not destroy him. The grave could not hold him. And after three days, he rose again and is alive forevermore. That's my king. That's
Christ my Savior, Jesus of Nazareth. He is the ever-perfect one. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. This man stands forth on the highest pinnacle of heavenly glory, proclaimed by God, acknowledged by angels, adored by people, and feared by demons, and he is risen. He's the Lord, he's the King, his name is Jesus, and he lives forever and ever and ever. Thank you, Father. to thank him for his goodness and his mercy. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you honor and praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on.
Now, Father, we thank you today. We thank you for the most obvious, and that is you sent your son, Jesus, when we were separated, despite our not knowing, despite all of our failures and all of our wrongdoings, in the midst of that, you sent your son, Jesus, to reconcile, to redeem us. And for that, on this Easter, that's what we celebrate. We celebrate that despite our sin, despite our faults, our failures, there was one man who came, who paid the price, and now bridged the gap between our Heavenly Father and humanity. And so for that today, we give you all the praise, Lord Jesus. You alone are worthy. You are the King. You are the Lord. You are our everything. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that next for the next few minutes, that you will anoint every heart, you will anoint my mind to speak your word with clarity so that when we leave here, Lord, we'll better understand what you did for all of humanity, whether they recognize it or not, you paid a price, and we give you the praise. We give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said together, amen. amen. One more time, before you're seated, even online, if you can't even shout, I want you to put clap emojis. I want you to give the Lord, Jesus, come on. All over this house, give the Lord. Give the Lord an offering of praise. Come on. Hallelujah. And you may be seated. Praise the Lord. It's wonderful to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Those who are watching us online, you got your Bible. Turn with me to the book of John. It's exciting. Some exciting news. The Breakfast Club continues to go on. And our prophetic community and class will begin actually April the 30th but we're taking registrations as early as next week, and it will be online, I promise you. And if you're prophetic, you feel you want to know more about how to hear God's voice, and you want to be a part of that, you need to take that class. I'll be teaching it. It'll be online, and we'll be collaborating and sharing, and I want to mentor you. I want to help you to understand how to flow in the prophetic, how to do it properly, how to do everything in decency, and in order. So really, we're, t it's, we're just opening up for 25 people. So the sooner you come, the quicker you come, you get in there. It's going to be an incredible time. I'm going to personally mentor and uh, encourage you in the ways of the Lord. If there's anything I believe today, we need prophetic integrity. And I hear a lot of things that people are, 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 are prophesying, they're prophesying who's going to be the next president because they want their president to go in. That's not true prophecy. True prophecy is prophecy. It's for the church. It's for the people of God. I'm not against those things. I'm just saying there is some kind of whack things out there. We want to bring some order, some decency, and uh, proper operations within the kingdom of God. So if you're, if you're in, interested, that'll be coming down the line. Join us and it'll be an exciting time for us to collaborate and work together. All right, Book of John, chapter 11, verse 23, and we're going to read just three verses today, three verses, 23, 24, 25. We'll cover some others, but after that, you'll just watch with me on, on the screen. It'll help you, but I want you to mark this in your Bible if you can, because this is a story right before Jesus is brought to the cross. And um, something incredible happens here to one of his best friends. Uh, this, this gentleman was never one of Jesus' disciples, uh, but this was one of his friends, Lazarus. So John chapter 11, verse 23, we're going to read verse 24 and 25. Jesus said to her, this is Lazarus' sister, your brother will rise again. But Martha said to him, Lord, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said to her, and this is important today, this is, this is really the theme, the story, and the message 
on this Easter here at City Church. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Lord, I ask that you add blessing to your word. We bring every thought into captivity. May you be glorified in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus is our resurrection. Jesus does not promise he will give us resurrection, although he does. He reminds us that if you believe in him, you will understand that the resurrection is truly a person. And we'll get to that in a moment. But just, just soak that in as you sit there. We go through the word today. There's about four or five things I just want to point out. And I believe when we get to the end, it's going to speak to everyone here. It's under the sound of my voice. Number one, the resurrection, ladies and gentlemen, is an event, okay? Let's talk about the resurrection. The resurrection is an historical event. The resurrection actually took place. And I want you to understand that. Historically, not only scholars in the word, but also uh, non-biblical, extra-biblical, secular historians have proven that there was a man named Jesus who had followers who was crucified by the Roman Empire and was buried and the story goes that he was risen from the grave and it's important that it's an historical event and the Bible points this out however we're not trying to today to just prove these things just by the Bible because I'll get to that in a moment but the, the 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 event itself whether it was recorded in the Bible and it is in four beautiful stories of Matthew Mark Luke and John the book of uh, of, of the prophecies of Isaiah, which was 700 years even before, uh, reminds us that he would be bruised for our iniquity. He would be chastised for our peace. And by his stripes, uh, we are healed. So we see historically that this prophetic event took place. It actually took place 2,000 years ago when Jesus was 33 years old. Old. So the event, ladies and gentlemen, is where our faith lies. Now, here, here's, here's some interesting things. A lot of folks will, 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 will put their, 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 their hope, and I, I want you to understand what this, this point I'm going to make. They'll put their hope in, in, in things uh, just in the Bible. And I've learned some, some things about the Bible as I have uh, studied over the years that you can use the Bible to prove or disprove almost every doctrine that we believe. I've had people try to prove to me that tithing is not for the believer by using the Bible. I've had people use the Bible to prove to me that tithing is for the believer, which I believe it is. But here's my point. You can take the Bible, find a subject, and you can prove just about anything. I've had people try to prove to me that having uh, extramarital sex out of marriage is okay. I've had, I've had people say, you know, God gives you, he gives you a pass and, and they'll, they'll show me scripture. And I just want to look at them like, you know, like, where did you get your theology from? But the point I'm making is that sometimes we put our hope and our trust in things that are good, but they're, 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 that's not where our hope should be today. Our hope should be, as a believer, not in so much the things that we hear around us, but the Bible says that we need to put our hope and our trust in the resurrection. Let me read you a verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14 says this. If any Christ, if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is useless. And your faith is also 
useless. So everything that we are as believers is built upon not just a biblical text, but on the fact that it took place. Jesus was born. He lived on the planet. He was crucified. He died, but more importantly, he resurrected from the dead. And that is where our faith should be today. Our faith should be. You say, well, I don't believe the Bible. That's fine. But you've got to know that Jesus really died on the cross. He died and it happened. And ladies and gentlemen, that's where our faith and our focus ought to be today because that is the proof of who we are as believers. You can go to Muhammad's grave and Muhammad's bones are still in the grave. You can go to Confucius' uh, grave and his bones are still there. But if you go to my Lord's grave, his bones aren't there, his body's not there because Jesus is alive today and he lives, ladies and gentlemen, forever and ever more. If you believe that, you want to give the Lord an offering of praise today. So our faith is based on the resurrection. This is why Easter is so important. This is why you showed up today. You showed up today because today marks the day that we celebrate that he resurrected. And if he had not resurrected... Everything you believe, and you can go through documents. I know some people, they believe in speaking in tongues. They don't believe in speaking in tongues. They, they believe in faith, and they, don't, they think the faith stuff is too much. And you go back and forth, back and forth. I believe uh, salvation is when you confess your sins. I believe salvation is when you're baptized. But here's the fact. All those things are doctrines, and they can be argued. Documents can be argued. But l- listen to this. Let me tell you a story about a document. When Tim and I got married... We signed the document afterwards. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's a, it's a marriage certificate. And the marriage certificate is where we actually bind ourselves to legally, lawfully into holy matrimony. So we did that. Well, like a lot of people, five years later, Tammy wanted to try to keep her maiden name, maiden name as long as she possibly could. So... She was, she was happy to be at McManus, but she wasn't forced to change her documents. So we were flying to Europe one year, and she, she didn't have the proper passport because now she bought a ticket that said Tammy McManus. But her documentation said Tammy Pullman. So this forced her to go to have to change all the documentation. How many people love going to places like the DMV? Doesn't that just, doesn't that just cause you to lose your salvation? <laughs> going to places like the DMV or a certificate, the marriage license and all those things, I mean, it could get to you. So here she's standing in line to get her marriage certificate and of course then so that we can change the documentation and, and, and so now she can legally uh, get a ticket that says Tammy McManus. Well, lo and behold, we're standing in line. We finally get to our place and the lady, she looks up the, the, the marriage certificate and she looks us at us and she says, oh, whoa. Well, hey, what's wrong, lady? She says, um, well, this, this certificate is invalid. I said, what, 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 what certificate is invalid? She said, your marriage certificate. I said, really? So what you're saying is that right now, after five years, I could actually just jet and there's no repercussion? I mean, I don't have to go get a divorce lawyer, nothing like that? She goes, no. She said, here, see, what happened is that the minister signed in the wrong place. And so legally, you're not married. I started smiling. 
I said, I got her just where I want her. <laughs> she said, you could both just walk away. I said, no, no, we'll not walk away. It's been a good five years. We, we want to get it right. And I said, but we do want to be married on October the 10th. This is actually in the month of June, and it's five years later. She, says, she said, Pastor, and it's, it was the amazing thing. I had just preached at her church the week before. And she said, I know who you are. She said, we're going to retroactive and make it all right as if it never happened. She said, because I can do that. I'm the supervisor here. I said, well, good. We want to stay married. Now, here's the point I want to make. Whether that certificate was right or not, there was an event. See, sometimes certificates can be wrong and your information can be juggled and, and you get distracted and you hear this guy on YouTube and you talk to this one over here and if there's ever been an age of information, this is the age and you can hear one guy said, man, he stayed in the tomb just two days and one guy says he stayed in three days. But here's the point. Tammy and I had an event and I was there. And there were eyewitnesses, and they saw whether the certificate was correct or not, there was still an event called the joining of two hands in holy matrimony of Owen and Tammy, not Pullman, but Tammy McManus. And now we're thankful to celebrate 31 years, going on 32 years of marriage. Thank you, Tammy. But the event took place. So the resurrection is an event, and it actually took place. And that's where today, if you don't believe anything, you put your hope and your trust in the fact that if Jesus died and rose again, surely he did that not just so that he could live, but so that you and I could live with him forever and ever. Can you say amen? The resurrection validates that Jesus was who he was. Jesus was affirmed and validated by God because God raised him up. As I said earlier, all religions have their graves. You can go there and see all of the religious leaders. I've been to our leader's grave. They have pointed it out. We've been there twice in Israel. We wanted to go back this year, and really there's a whole lot of turmoil, so we're just waiting for things to settle down. But the fact is, if you've gone there, when you walk into the tomb, you realize that there are no bones, there's no, there's, there's no, uh, there's no corpse, there's nothing it's an empty place. And when you walk into the place, they say that this is it. I have sat right there on the side and envisioned the angel and his, and his, and his cloth being wrapped up in place so, so gently. And you sense, you sense there's one overwhelming sense that comes into your, your being is that, man, he truly did rise from the grave. See, the Pharisees wanted to see Jesus do miracles as if casting out devil wasn't enough, as if raising the dead wasn't enough, uh, as if healing the sick wasn't enough. Oh, here's one. As if walking on water wasn't enough. But they begged, they went to him, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the couldn't sees, the wouldn't sees, and they demanded, they demanded Jesus, you do a miracle to show and to prove that you are who you say that you are. And Jesus said, the only sign that you're going to get is this, and Matthew 12, 38 records it, listen to this. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered the teacher saying, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks a sign after a sign. And no sign will be given to you except Jonah. Now, if you're a kid that went to Sunday school, you know that Jonah was swallowed up 
by a whale. It was prophetic, or really the Bible calls it a great big fish. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The only sign that we have today that Jesus truly is the Son of God is the fact that he died, he was buried, and then he was resurrected. That is enough sign for me today. That's why Easter is so important. It is enough proof today to celebrate my faith, to be excited about who we are in Christ because Jesus is not dead, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus is alive. Can you give him an offering of praise and a shout of amen? The resurrection is not only a proof, it validates, but the resurrection is my justification. Now, what's this word? It's a theological term, and it's really quickly. I want to keep it simple because remember, if it's not simple, I can't understand it. It's not because I'm trying to break it down for you. I'm trying to break it down for me. Justification is a $5 theological word that simply means this. It's just as though I have never done anything wrong. Now, don't raise your hand. This is not an altar call. But how many here? can say that you've never done anything wrong. We have all sinned. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. But this is a legal term. And if you're a lawyer, you understand. If you understand that terminology, that here's what it means, that you have been legally cleared of everything that you have done wrong you were doing wrong and what you will ever do that is wrong. Or can we just make it real churchy? All your sins in the past, all your sins now, and even the sins that you will commit. Why? Because when Jesus went to the cross and resurrected, Paul reminds us that he justified us just as if we had never sinned. The reason why Jesus, listen to me now, and here's where people get it really mixed up. The reason why we serve a really nice Jesus, have you ever missed it? Don't raise your hand, it's not an alt call, it's just for you to think about. But when you miss it and you come back to the Lord, and you ask him for forgiveness, or you ask him to help you. He's always really nice and gentle. I wish people were like that. Yes. yes. But, but Jesus is always, he's a nice Jesus. How many know the nice Jesus? Now, I know some churches make Jesus to be a mean Jesus. But our Jesus that's in the Bible sees us as his own. And the reason why he is nice to you is because when you come to him and you tell him how much you have done wrong, he looks at you as if he doesn't even know what you're talking about. And the reason why he can be kind to you is because he reminds us that when he went to the cross and he resurrected, he not only forgave you, how many are thankful for forgiveness? But you ought to be more thankful today that you have been justified because every time that you come to him, he doesn't remind you of what you've done. He lets you know how good you are. He lets you know about your future and what he's got planned for you because he justified you as if you have never done anything wrong. And many people today in the church, hear my voice, hear me now. Many people on this Easter have received Christ's forgiveness. 
but they have never gone the next step to understand that when he justifies you, he cleanses you, and he sees you as something that's perfect. You don't see it, people don't see it, but he sees it. And if you can get a revelation of the resurrection, you'll move from just living a life of forgiveness to a life of justification where you walk with your head up, you back up, and you realize today, I'm somebody, not because of what I've done, but because of what he has done. He justified me as if, come on, somebody, as if I've never sinned. Romans 4.25 says this, he was handed over to die because of our sins. So who put him on there? I know some people say, well, the Jews, they killed Jesus. Oh, well, it was the Romans who killed Jesus. No, ladies and gentlemen, it was not the Romans or the Jews that really killed him. It was the sins of humanity that killed him. But Paul says this, he was there because of our sins in verse 25, but he was raised to life to make us right with God. How many are thankful today that you're not just forgiven of your sin, but you actually stand in right relationship with Almighty God? If you could just get a revelation of that today. On this Resurrection Sunday, if you could just ask the Holy Spirit to show you, Lord, thank you for the forgiveness. Thank you for cleansing me. Yes, 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 yes. And all of that is where it begins. But there's more to it about the resurrection. He justified my life as if I had never, ever, ever sinned. And this is so important because people live with guilt and shame. There are people sitting here this morning. There are people watching us online. You have asked the Lord to forgive you, but it's the guilt and the shame of the things that you have done that your conscience hasn't been cleared. And here's what I've learned. Guilt and shame attracts guilt and shame. People will look at you as if you're guilty, as if you're shame, because shame and guilt attracts attention. Have you ever wondered why people get mistreated? I'm not saying it's the only case, but a lot of times people in the church will say, oh, she looked at me as if I'm nobody. Well, let me ask you this. What do you think of yourself? Because if you really realize today that you're not down and out, but that you have been washed, yes, but you have been, Pastor Ryan, justified. You know this legal term. You understand, it's as if you didn't even have a record. So when you come to Jesus and you're telling him about all the things you've done, he looks at you like, uh, 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 uh. Didn't I, didn't I, didn't I take care of that? But you keep reminding yourself and what you do is you remind all the other people around you about where you've been. When you ought to remind them, it's not, a bad, it's not how bad my past has been, it's about how, my, how good my future is going to be because now I'm justified, just as if I had never sinned. Say it out loud, justified. justified. Come on, all over the South, say it, justified. justified. When you're justified, when you have a revelation. On this Easter, I'm praying that you'll get a revelation of who you are, that you're not just forgiven, but you're justified and you've been set as a son and a daughter of the Most High God through the blood of Jesus Christ. And number four, the resurrection is our guarantee. The resurrection does deal with our past, but it also gives us a future resurrection. 
1 Corinthians 15, 22. Listen to what Paul said. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall we all be made alive. How many know that when a baby's born, usually, if not, it's, there's something wrong, but most of the babies are born, they come head first. And I said this the other night, that it's always the head. Stay attached to the head, and Jesus Christ is the head. Jesus Christ came into the world head first. He went before us. And because of what he did, Jesus being the head, the head goes first before the body. So Jesus went before us. And let me just, let me just, let me just, let me just, let me just help you a little bit today. All of us will die. We need, we need to, we need, you know, I know it's no newsflash. I'm not going to use your newsflash. We all know that. And, and we don't like to think about it. When you're in your teens and you're 20 and you're 30, you just think, you know, well, it's going to be so, it, this is a long time. But the truth is, this life is very short. I mean, I was talking to my doctor who's a holistic doctor, and she's an MD, but she likes to try alternative medicines, and she was recently went down to Florida. And, she's, and if I call the names that she sat with, every one of you would know them. And they're, they're names of people you've never met, but they're names out there. And she was relaying to us that they think they have found the secret to, how, to allow people to live to be 200 years old. And I thought to myself, well, the Bible says you can only get 120 years, but we shall see. Carry on, my sister. If you think that you can do that, that's fine. But then I thought, even 200 years, 200 years, when you, in comparison to reality or of, of, human, of, of eternity, it's a very, very short time. But the Bible says that all of us will die and arise. But the question is, will you arise in heaven or in a place that is distant from God? My 10-year-old daughter, the other day, she explained to me what hell was all about. And I thought, well, let me just hear her out, see, because, you know, the mind of a 10-year-old. Now, my, my daughter's bright. I get that. But she said to me, she said, Dad, I figured out what hell is. Hell, there may be flames. There may be fire. She said, but to me, the worst part is, is that for eternity, you'll be separated from God. And then she said, Daddy, if people don't want God on the earth, why would they want God in heaven? And I thought, you want to preach? You figured it out. Because see, if you don't want to celebrate Jesus here, I've never been to a funeral yet that anybody went to hell. I've, I've heard preachers, I, I've seen, I, mean, I don't judge anybody. Like, don't judge. I don't judge anybody, but surely you can judge the fruit. And if somebody's never been to Jesus' house and they've never talked about him, chances are they don't know him. And the question is, if you don't want him here, why do you want him forever? But for those of us who want him now, we want to live with him forever. See, when the believer rises, here's the good news. We will have a body like Christ. Now, I, don't, I can go all kind of ways with that, right? Some of us are working out every day, and we're trying to keep our body in tip-top shape. And you know, the harder you, the, the harder you work and the older you get, the less results you receive. Because there's just something about the old body is going to wear out. 
But here's the good news. The good news is we're going to have a body like Jesus. And you know what kind of bodies we're going to have? We're going to be wireless bodies. We won't have these things attacking us. So I figured it out. We're not going to have a Windows. We're going to have a Mac body. No. no. <laughs> First Corinthians 15:44. There is very slow, Lord, help them out. They are buried as natural humans, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies. There is hope. The only way that you can get to heaven, and I do want to see a, a, a raise of hands. How many of they would say, Bishop, I want to go to heaven. Let me see you. Come on. Okay, good. The only way to get there is to die. Think about it. Everybody's saying, I, we sing songs, I can't wait to get to heaven. But the only way to get there is to die. The only way Jesus could get to heaven to be with his father, this was the joy that was set before him. He's like, I get to die. I get to go. It's my time because I am finished. I've done my work. And now there lays up for me a guarantee that I will live forever and ever with my heavenly father. The death and the funeral is not the end, ladies and gentlemen. Think about the people on that bridge in Baltimore. Seven people plunged into the water, and my thought was, were they ever thinking about their future? They thought that day when they left home. When they left home that day, I'm sure they were thinking about getting back to their children, getting back to their wives, and carrying on the evening as always. However, we will walk out of here today, and will you think about your future. The devil reminds you of your past to keep you neutralized. But I want to remind you about your future. And your future has hope today because Jesus died and resurrected. So will you if you are in Christ. You all that hear my voice today, you will all rise. You will die and you will rise. But the question is, where will you spin? I've learned this, and I just want to help you. I know we got time, but I want to just say this one thing. I believe Christians, listen to me, all you Christians today, you need to become more heavenly minded. We're so earthly minded. I'm not, I'm not against success on the earth. I'm not, I'm not against success. I'm believing for a debt-free house, debt-free car. Debt, I'm, I'm believing for everything that God has for me on this earth. We will receive it. However, that is not our guarantee. Our guarantee is that we will spend eternity with God in heaven. And here's why I want to encourage you to become heavenly minded. Because when you have a vacation planned and you keep thinking about it, it makes you want to get up every morning and go to work. Uh, we, we decided we're going to go somewhere in, in, in August with my family. And, and, and Brooke's going to go with us, uh, Olivia and Liam. And so we made plans, and then we announced it to our kids. Now, this is, this, is, this is February when we decided to do it, and we're going in August. The next day, Olivia had her bags <laughs> packed. My daughter, my 10-year-old. She was up for school one hour early. She was ready to go. And isn't it true that when you have somewhere to go, you get all excited? It may be months down the road, but you get up and say, well, you know, in two years, I'm going to Europe. 
I can get up today and go to work because, you know, I don't have to do this all the time. In 18 months, I'm going to Florida. <laughs> do you know if you'd start thinking about someday soon I'm going to be with Jesus? If you'll just stop putting all your hope and trust in this world, haven't you noticed this world is going like crazy? No, but the heavens, the kingdom of God, the goodness of the Lord, where we'll take our final place, that's what we should be thinking about. Where am I going? It could be today, it could be tomorrow, it may be next year, but I become heavily minded and I'm thinking of the goodness of the Lord. Do you know that suicides, more suicides are committed on Monday than Friday? Because people think at least I don't have to work Saturday and Sunday. It's a proven fact that when people have hope, they can even put off suicide for two days. But the reason why people become so hopeless and why Christians get tired of going to church is because they're putting all their hope and trust in this life. And they're not putting their hope and their trust in the resurrection where we will spend for eternity. And the last thing, the resurrection is an experience. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. The resurrection, ladies and gentlemen, is not just an event. It's not just an experience. The resurrection is a person. He comes into your life to bring resurrection, not tomorrow, but to now. All of us have a Lazarus in our life. All of us in our lives have Lazarus inside of us. The situation in our lives that we have just accepted that that's the way it's going to be. But Jesus wants to roll away the stone today. He wants to come into your graveyard and he wants to, re he wants to resurrect some things that have been down. Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your business. Maybe it's your reputation. Maybe it's past hurts. Maybe it's some pains you're dealing with today. But if you'll let Jesus in... If you'll let Jesus in, young man, young lady, if you'll let Jesus in your tomb today, he will take what's stinking. And bring it alive. So how do I experience resurrection? Number one, you got to make room for him. On this Easter Everyone who can hear my voice from the front to the back, from one side to the other, those who are watching online, you're watching in real time, you'll watch later on. Are you making room today for Jesus? Because when Martha and Mary met Jesus after their brother had died, Mary and Martha said, Jesus, if you had been here, he would not have died. And the Bible says that Jesus, because it was his friend, he groaned, he wept. But it wasn't until, it wasn't until Jesus told them to roll away the stone. Now listen to me. I don't want to take anything from Pastor Harvey's message, but it was awesome. Amen. Jesus cannot roll away your stone. No, 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 let me just say it again. Jesus will not roll away the stone of the grave that you're in today. Jesus said, roll away the stone. And when the stone was rolled away, they made room even though he, and we'll use King James Version, stinketh for four days. When you think that everything in your life is over, maybe it's your health condition, maybe it's pains, maybe, I don't know what, maybe it's restoration in your family. I don't know where you, what you're dealing with today on this Easter, but listen to me. 
if Jesus could walk into a, a tomb with a man in a corpse that had been dead for four days and they made room for him and Jesus walked in, you need to make room today for him so that he can resurrect your pain. He can resurrect your suffering and bring you into resurrected life. So first of all, you've got to open up and allow the supernatural. And secondly, when Jesus walked in, it's noticed that Jesus didn't pray. I thought that was interesting. If you go back and read the text, Jesus never prayed. You know what he did? John 11, verse 41, this is what he did. He said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Do you know what Jesus did when he walked into the tomb? He began to praise the Father. I wonder if you're praising the Father today. You know what? Sometimes we praise on the other side of the grave. We need to be praising him inside of the grave. Oh, you missed that. You missed that in the back. Sometimes we praise him for after Lazarus arise. The whole world was praising God after Lazarus came out, but only Jesus was praising the Father before Lazarus came up. If you want your Lazarus to arise in your life, it's time to praise the Father now, not after. Now before the miracle. Now, today, we praise him. On this Easter, we praise him right now. Somebody, if you believe that, stand on your feet and praise him with all of your heart and all of your mind and all of your strength. Jesus thanked God. Did you hear me? He didn't pray. Sometimes you pray until you're blue in the face. You need to thank God that your life is resurrected. Are you hearing me today? Are you hearing me today? And then thirdly, Jesus proclaims, Lazarus, come forth. I think you need to proclaim more and complain less. Did y'all hear me in the back? Wave at me. Complain more? No. Proclaim more. Proclaim more and complain less. What's the world do? They complain about everything. I don't like the Democrats. I don't like the Republicans. I don't like this. I don't like that. But when have you just thank God that you've got some breath, some air in your lungs? Come on, you say it's too simple. No, it's not. Are you thanking God that you're alive today? And if you're alive, you can do something about your future. Jesus said, loose him and let him go. I think it's time that we start speaking to the Lazarus in our life. On this Easter, speak to the Lazarus. It may be your health. I, I'm not praying about it. I speak to it. Body, come under subjection to the name of Jesus. By the stripes of the Lord Jesus, I'm healed today. I'm walking out of here with my miracle. I'm walking out of here, and this year is going to be my best year because I'm giving God all the thanks, all the praise, all the glory, for only he can do it. How many hear what I'm saying today? On this Easter, we have hope. We have hope. Just look at somebody and just give them a big smile. Smile at them. Hope, resurrection, Easter. Now you got to let him in though. You got to let him in. That's the problem, sir. You think Jesus is going to roll your stone away. No, he's not. You got to roll your own stone away. Jesus never rolled a stone. He said, roll that stone away. He just stood back. He just said, look at that preacher. Why don't he do it? No, 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 no. You don't understand. 
Jesus never comes into a grave site that he's not invited. He never comes to a heart where he's pushed out. He only comes where you have made an effort to push away all the things that are holding you back. And you say, you know what, today is my day. Easter's my day. I'm about to have a resurrection. Yes, when I die, I'm going to be with the heaven. But today, the Lazarus in my life have been stinking. I'm tired of my stinking thinking. I want to see resurrection because resurrection has an aroma. Resurrection has a fragrance. Resurrection has a smell of victory and delight because that's who we serve. But you got to roll away your stone. Jesus is not going to overtake you. Roll away that stone. I don't know who even did it. The text doesn't even say it, Pastor Chris. It doesn't even say it. I'm sure it was the people who loved him the most. I can just imagine the guys were sitting down and letting the girl people push the stone. Shame on them. But when a girl wants something, a girl can find some strength. Don't you ever put down on women. Women were the first prophets in the Bible. It was the first, it was a woman who went to the grave and looked in first. Where were the guys? Hiding, scared, running for their reputation. No, girls were like, we're going to go see what's going on. It's like that white girl in every horror movie. He ain't there. He's alive. He's alive. It took a woman because a man wouldn't do his job. A woman had to go look in and make sure they got more courage. I'm sure it was his sister, Martha and Mary, pushing the stone away. And when Jesus, and they said, it stinks. Why do you want to go in? It stinks. Jesus walks into mess and cleans it up. He walks into a mess. And he wants to come into your mess today. You may have just thought you came to Easter Sunday, but God brought you here to take the stuff that's stinking in your life. And turn it around and clean it up. Wash it up. So you can leave out justified. Father, I preach what you told me to preach. I've said what you told me to say. I take personal responsibility for it. I preach with my heart. I preach with the things that you've given me. And now I'm asking you to bring your people to a specific place. With every head bowed, every eye closed, you say, Bishop, today I want to make sure that I've made room for Jesus in my life. I want to make sure there's some things that are stinking there's some things that are not right that should be, but I, I, I need, I need, I need desperately, I need some changes on this Easter. I'm in church. I'm telling you, there is nobody here in this room by accident. Everyone here. Because the Lord brought you here to hear this message. If that's you today, you're saying, I want to roll away the stone, make room for the Lord. If that's you, right where you are, no one's looking around. I just want you to simply lift your hand up real high. I want to pray for you. Come on. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hands all over. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Open up your grave and let the stone be rolled away. And let Jesus come in. Now listen, on this Easter, I believe we should make a public stand, right? We're not ashamed of him. So I'm going to ask those of you who have your hand lifted, and maybe you didn't lift your hand, I want to pray with you because I believe today God's going to take the stinking things out of your life and he's going to bring in his cleansing blood. 
So if you have your hand lifted, I want to pray with you. Please get out of your seat as they sing. Come, come. I want to pray with you. Come. Come. Come on, young man, young lady. Come, come, come in Jesus' name. Come. If you have just responded to the call that Bishop said and you've raised your hand where you are, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat. I want to pray with you on this day. Church family, I have good news. I'm here to proclaim good news today on this Resurrection Sunday. He is risen. Let me say it again. He is risen. Isn't that good news today? You should go out and tell somebody and bring joy to their lives that our Lord Jesus has risen, that he is not in the grave. The tomb was empty. It's empty. He is at the right hand of the Father. Well, church family, this has been a great Resurrection Sunday to celebrate with you. Bishop preached a word today that just is stirring my spirit, stirring my heart as we remember why we celebrate and why we do what we do. It's because our Lord has risen from the grave. And because of that, we may have and partake in the resurrection and have eternal life. That's the purpose. That's the heart of God. That's the reason why our Father, which is in heaven, sent his only begotten Son, that whomever should believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And in order for that to take place, he had to come as a man, strip down his glory from heaven, walk this earth, be tempted but yet never sin, to go to the cross, not complain, to take up his mantle, to die. But you know what? He rose again. And before he rose, he went down and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave so that you may be able to rejoice today. So family, if you're here today and you say, you know what? I have been stirred in my spirit, and today is the day. Look, I'm standing in the studio here, and right in front of me are the words on the wall, seize the day. Today is the day for your salvation. Don't let this day pass without you making Jesus Lord of your life. So if that's you right there, I want to pray with you right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you today. I thank you that you went to the cross, that you died, that you were buried, but that you rose again. And I declare that today. Lord, I ask that you come into my heart, cleanse me, make me brand new. Lord, I will put you first, equip me, and become the Lord of my life. If you prayed that prayer today, we believe that you have been saved. We want you to let us know in the chat. There's a number on the screen you can call, you can text. Just let us know. We want to connect with you. We want to make sure that you don't walk this life alone, that you also have someone to share in this journey with you. You know, Bishop said one thing that really stood out to me in this last few moments. He said, complain less and proclaim more. So would you right now just say, Lord, I thank you that you heard my prayer. Sometimes we just have to sit back and say, Father in heaven, I just thank you. I thank you that you hear me. That's a reminder to us that we're not alone in this journey. And you know what? As we look forward to what's coming next, we have so many things happening at City Church. This is a vibrant ministry. So as we talked about earlier, grow classes are moving online. So if you said, you know what, I wanted to participate in grow classes, but because of the the ups and downs and the schedules of life, I haven't been able to commit to it as much as I would want to. It's coming online to meet you where you are. So you can go to citychurchnola.life and find out all of the information about that. And also, as Bishop mentioned, he's going to be teaching a course, but it's only limited to the first 25 people whenever registration opens up on the art of hearing God. So if you said, you know what, that really speaks to me. I want to go deeper in that. It's for you, but only for the first 25. So make sure you're ready and that you're tuned in to all of our media platforms to find out exactly when registration will be open. Well, church family, it's been a blessing today to serve with you, to to speak to you, to speak life and to celebrate this Resurrection Sunday. Because as we learned today, the resurrection was not only an event, but the resurrection is a person. And that person is Jesus, our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Well, look, be blessed today. If you're going out and you're celebrating with family or whatever you have going on, tell somebody about the love of God and that he is risen. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We'll see you next week.